And joining us now at the table, you saw those two guys, one of the best backcourts in the NBA with the Blazers, Neil Olshay, the president of basketball operations for Portland. Neil, a quiet free agency period for you guys. You guys did most of your spending a season ago, but what do you make of the guy you got in the draft with Caleb Swanigan so far? You know, we're happy with Caleb. You know, I think any time you get what you bought, Right. I mean that, that he's exactly as advertised. He's an elite rebounder. He's a screen setter 50 50 balls um, He's got more offensive game. I think than people think so, you know So we're pleased you know to get a guy that can probably contribute a little bit right away late in the first round It's only 20 years old and is still tracking up is uh, is gonna be a good asset for us Is he a better passer? Than I would have realized at Purdue. I've seen him here. He looks like he has a, a good feel for passing the ball from the elbow area he does, and that was one of the things that was really intriguing, knowing how much Terry values, you know, trusting the pass for everybody playing through the elbows is that we think we got two guys. But he, I, I don't know, I forget what the numbers were, Jeff, but he was the only player in college basketball in like the last decade at, to average a certain amount of rebounds, certain amount of assists. So, you know, I think we saw it early in summer league when he was playing with more of our roster guys like Pat Connaughton and Zach Collins that you can play through him a little bit, you know, at the elbow. And he, he really has a great feel for the game. He plays the right way, which is, what we're excited about is that when he's out there where he doesn't have to carry the load, but he's with Lillard, McCollum, Nurkic, Aminu, guys like that, you know, now he can do all those little things that just help you win. A guy whose uh, story, his personal story, very inspiring and being over, overcoming the things that he has in his life. Uh, how much of an impression did that make on you during the interview and the draft process? Well, you know, we're very high on character in Portland. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we've also had a little bit of a history of taking guys that have had... You know, I've had challenges, you know, maybe not as much off the floor as Caleb has faced, but guys like Damian, who was under-recruited, you know, went to a small school. C.J. McCollum, obviously he's a five-foot-four sophomore. You know, he grew late, you know, went through Lehigh. So guys that have accomplished something in their life or overcome obstacles, be it on or off the floor, um, it, it really, it builds character for us, and it gives them that kind of determination that when you're in a small market and you're asked to carry more of the load earlier in your career, they're willing to accept that kind of responsibility. Uh, Zach Collins, a guy that uh, you guys drafted as well, and uh, a late riser. I mean, he had a great run in the NCAA tournament. Uh, not playing today, but your early impressions of him so far. Well, he, he's going to be a big-time player. I mean, he was a late riser to the degree that he probably went from, you know, mid-first to higher in the lottery. Okay. But there wasn't an executive in this league that didn't have, have him in the lottery, whether he was playing 19 minutes at Gonzaga behind Karnuski or whether he was playing 29 minutes carrying the load in the NCAA tournament. So you just don't find seven-footers with his skill that's a two-way player. I mean, that, that's what we're really excited about is I think, you know, people have the perception he's a pick-and-pop offensive guy, and, you know, he, he struggled here physically a little bit, but he was the best defensive player in any of the summer leagues in terms of rim protection, steals percentage, block percentage, the way he moves his feet. So that's what we're excited about both these guys is that they're two-way guys and they can impact the game in ways other than just scoring. I like his competitive spirit. You know, he's not like this, you know, what you would maybe think of as far as a guy even though he can shoot like he, he puts his face in into the play like he's not he's not afraid of no the he, he's, he's, he's chippy too you know one of the things we liked about him is he's not a shrinking violet he's got an edge to him you know he'll drill you coming through the lane he'll set picks he's willing to bang in the post and you know he's got his teammates back so you know that's that's another thing with with zach you know you just don't get 19 year old kids that are advanced like that and you know, for us, we also like the fact that, you know, like he did come off the bench at Gonzaga, which is what he'll end up doing for us initially. Jarrell and Martin. That was, that was yeah. good for, good for, good for Jarrell. It's nice to yeah. see Jarrell back on the court and healthy yeah. after, you know, he kind of went through the draft process last year injured, and right. he probably dropped a little bit in the draft as a result, but he's getting his body and his game back. So, but this is what Biggie can do right there. I like Great. the nickname, Biggie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's right. what they've gone with. So <laughs> I'm, prob I'm probably the last to arrive on the uh, on the nickname patrol. But apparently, you know, I've been I've been outvoted because I've been calling him Caleb, and guys are rolling their eyes. Hey, so you, speaking of uh, the whole you know cultural thing and uh, Biggie, uh, Damian Lillard, who's known to rap a little bit, had his birthday yesterday. Uh, I'm guessing as the team's general manager, you you had a little gift for him on his birthday. What would you send him? Yeah. <laughs> Check every, every two weeks. What else do you have to send him? 
Are you kidding? He should be sending me the gift. <laughs> exactly. like, he got $125 million. Like, isn't that the gift? It's the thought, though. Beyond, beyond the workplace environment, he, there's a he personal. Got a, he got a birthday wish, and, and I didn't show up at his concert last night to bring down, bring up the demographic. So. Hold on. He had a, con he had a concert last night <laughs> I don't in know Portland? He, I don't know if he did a birthday concert. He had one this week. I know that. Yeah. So, yeah. so not bringing the middle-aged guy from the suburbs out yeah. there to, to ruin the demographic, probably. That probably was gift enough. He appeals to a larger audience. He I does. know that. He does. Yeah, we listen to it in the weight room, but on my free time, I'm not obligated. I told him. He, he, he put it on in the weight room when it was his day. I said, you know what, dude? You, you're taking Garth Brooks off for me. So, <laughs> Hey, do you remember these days with Dame Lillard, a.k.a. Dame Dollar, back in 2012? Do you remember what he did in his summer league here? I, I do. I remember he was co-MVP with a guy from Memphis, Josh Selby. Right. So it wow. just shows, you know, look, we, it's fun to be here. You know, we're all happy to be here, but there's got to be some semblance of reality. There's not. I, I don't and, thank and you. We're as guilty. Yeah, 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 you're contributing to it. You're, you're no, an enabler. No <laughs> I, I try not to be. Like, when we start t taking summer league play and start comparing them to Hall of Famers, yeah. are, are we kidding me? Yeah. Or, or, or the fact that half of these guys are not going to get on the floor. The other half are going to be in Belgium. Yeah. So, you know, at some point we have to have some reality. I mean, like, you know, I talked about it before. You know, Zach's beat up and he's got a quad bruise and we're going to get him healthy in time for Gerg's camp. I would rather have them play well at Gerg's camp in the middle of August playing against guys that are going to be in the league next year than worrying about competing right. against free agents after three days of practice. The other thing is we have these draft guys, Jeff, you know, they, they went four months without playing basketball. They got coddled by their agents right. doing beauty contest workouts. They traveled a little bit. They didn't lift. They don't have the nutrition. They're in and out of airports. They practice three days, and then we expect these guys to come out and be in peak condition. Right. So it's not going to happen. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that was always my – microcosm of summer league was Damian Lillard and Josh Selby one's an all-star and one's out of the league didn't quite make it yeah yeah it, it just shows you 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 can overvalue this summer league but this guy can I know he can shoot can he what does he have to do to be able to get on the floor Jamin yeah well well he's got to make more shots you know he, I mean I think what's he's over he's overvalued as a shooter and he's undervalued as an athlete and a guy who can handle and make plays, and he can really defend. He moves his feet. He's got good length. He did a great job on Tatum earlier in the tournament. Um, you know, he matched up yesterday with uh, Bryn Forbes, who was having a great right. summer league, used his length against him. But, you know, he's just got guys ahead of him. You know, we've been through this with some other guys, like Will Barton and Alan Crabb, where they got to wait their turn. We have McCollum, Turner, Mo Harkless, um, you know, Alan Crabb. I mean, it's just a tough rotation on the yeah. perimeter to crack. Hey, Jeff, uh, look, Jeff and uh, Neil, let's talk about uh, Yusuf Nurkic, a guy you guys picked up towards the latter part of the season. How's his health? He had, had broken down a little bit in the playoffs. How's his health, and where does he fit in moving forward? Uh, he did. Feel? He came in, look, he came in incredibly deconditioned. Um, you know, he wasn't playing a lot in Denver. He hadn't played game minutes. You know, he got out on the court and, you know, went on such a great run, you know, and, and played a lot of minutes for us, and we, we had great success. We were 14-6 and six with him in the lineup. Right. Um, which is one of the things, you know, we're looking at. We didn't have a lot of money to spend this summer. A lot of it will come with continuity and player development. But a lot of it also is, you know, Terry and I were talking about it today. If Yusuf Nurkic had played the last 22 games in Denver the way that he did for us, and we got him as a free agent, that would be a huge impact signing right, for us. Right. So that's one of the things that I think is going a little bit unnoticed is the fact that we're trying to extrapolate that 20-game run with him, having a dominant center that can protect the rim, can pass, can be a third option with Lillard and McCollum, as something we can build on this offseason. Is he back in, uh, is it Bosnia? Or no, he's Serbia? not. So he, he was back home for a while. He came back. He was working out in Portland. Portland. Um, okay. He's in L.A. working out. We've got a coach out there and a strength okay. coach with him. And, He's going to work out uh, there. He'll go home for August, and uh, we have one of our assistants will go over there with him okay. for a couple of weeks and get some work in. But, yeah, he's a monster. Yeah. And, you know, to get a guy, you know, that plays a position of need on the same career arc as Lillard with the skills that we value in terms of passing and, you know, and, and shooting the ball was really, you know, it was, it was very fortuitous for us at the trade deadline last right. year. And is he a free agent coming up? this year or do you have control of him one more year after this? another one so he'll be uh, he'll be a free agent next summer uh, he'll be restricted next summer if right. we don't do something with him this off season. so that makes that transaction with Denver all that more uh, valuable for you literally it, it did you know it was very difficult. Value, yeah. it, it, it was very difficult to give up Mason right. um, but you know at the end of the day the timeline he was on in terms of salary and we got we got hurt last year on calendar because so many of our guys came up at the same time we had to maximize our cap room 
But with, with Mace, you know, we were able to reset the clock back financially a little bit. So I think while we're on a big number right now, it's not as big as it would have been when we were projecting it in right. February prior to that trade. Memphis leading by 14, joined by Neil Olshay, the president of basketball operations of the Portland Trailblazers. Whether this game goes on to take on the Lakers and the, or the Mavericks. Hey, what do you make of the landscape with so many of the game's elite players, Neil, going from the Eastern Conference to the Western Conference. It's yeah. a strange nuance. You know, and, and, you know, nobody can figure it out. You know, I mean, it's it's not like they're going to just the warm weather cities. I mean, they're just migrating west. And I, and I don't know if it's that there are so many stars in the Western Conference. Uh -huh. I think at one point, I think other than Braun, I think 13 of the 14 highest rated players in the league are in the Western Conference now. So I don't know if it's as much, you know, joining the guys that are in the West already, if, that, if that's it. I don't know if it's that the bar is just so high in the Western Conference for how good you have to be. So you're more aggressive to attain those guys. Maybe you're not as patient, you know, developing your draft prospects because you need immediate help. And, and, but it, but it, you know, like it's a difficult landscape. I right. mean, you know, you have a luxury in the Eastern Conference, I think, where you can be probably more judicious with your payroll and more opportunistic and more patient and still be a playoff right. team. Right. Whereas in the West, if you're not pushing your chips in and trying to get better every day, you know, you could you could be as you, you could be good enough to be a two seed in the East and finish 12th in the West. Wow. Yeah, it's like Daryl Morey said, your uh, counterpart with the Rockets. If you're not in the arms race, you're on the sidelines. Yeah, yeah and, and look, and, and there's there's very few people in our business as smart as Daryl. Um, so if he's saying it, then it, you know, then a bubhead from Lemoyne College can figure it out too. <laughs> Lemoyne, I love it. I'll I had to get a Lemoyne York, plug in there. It. Neil, thanks a lot for joining us. Absolutely. And we'll let you off the hook for not sending Damien a, a birthday present. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, man. <laughs> thanks.